And as I get the recording started, I want to share with you how you can get a copy of today's slides. Hello again, Adriana. Hello, hello. Come on Google as soon as they log in. So I am good. Perfect, Cheryl. Well, we want to make sure that that happens for everybody, though, because sometimes your computer knows it's you. So we just want to make sure that everybody, wherever you serve, sees that and they're having a great experience, right? So, but Cheryl, bravo, because that's good that Google sees you and knows you exist. This is where you can get today's slides as well as the handout. Though those are there now the replay of course is not there because I am live right now speaking to you this is not recorded and because of that the replay won't show till later this afternoon now you can get the copy of the slides and handout right now so that's the slides I'm using there and you can use that URL bit.ly in fact I'm going to drop that into the chat box just so that you have it there as well all right, everybody, it's right there in the chat box, or you can use that QR code, all right? Snap that, and it'll take you straight there. This will only be accessible during the time of the session, okay? Afterwards, we will email it to you as well as let you know that the replay has been uploaded, so you have access to that. And the cool thing is when we email you is that any time, any time that there are any changes to the slide deck, any updates because the Google platform is always ever changing, ever evolving. Because of that, I will email you to let you know about the changes. So you'll kept, be kept up to date on the latest on making sure that the website, your website, works for you. All right. So let's go ahead and dive in. I want to say thank you to our wonderful Google partners who make this happen. Take a look because they are the people who invited you. Think of how you heard about this, how you registered, how you got here. Because if you have any questions afterwards, these are the people who are vested in your your success and do want to be of help to you plus they know who your local resources are and I am all about local I like to really focus on local people who can help and support you of course I can help and support by answering some of your questions but these people are right here that's UT Rio Grande SBDC Baker Ripley Houston LGBT Chamber the University of Houston Victoria SBDC my old stomping ground America's SBDC at MSU, Centro San Antonio, SCORE Austin, Bill, thank you for being here, the DEC, Salra State University, Rio Grande College, SBDC, Transition Skills Training, thank you, Julie and Kaden for, Kaylin for being here, El Paso Community College, SBDC, Del Mar, SBDC, Texas State, SBDC, Texas Tech, Northwest Texas Business Resource Center, all right, Brandy, from Lubbock, Texas, and Jamestown Regional Entrepreneur Center. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, I see Cheryl here and Harris. Welcome, welcome. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. Remember, if you have any questions, that's who to talk to. If you need anything, Google, if you'll go to that URL, you see it bright and blue in the middle, grow.google slash businesses. That's how you can get to that information on anything small business with Google. You have lots of resources available with you with a free Google account. Now, do understand everything that I'm going to be talking about today is 100% free to help make your website work for you. But those are just tools. I'm really going to be talking to you about best practices. I'm not here to sell you. I'm here to make you better. I do come from 20 plus years in small business and 15 in international e-commerce. So you're going to get much more than that. what's here in the slides. You can connect with me on Twitter. The first URL there is, or the first handle is Maria Duran at Maria Duran, D-U-R-O-N and you can connect with me on Twitter or on Instagram. I'm at getfound.growth. And if you want to tag me, I'm happy to share the love by sharing you out with people who I know, who I connect with in retweets or in my story. Okay, so you can use the hashtag grow with Google, but feel free to tag me too. And that way I can make sure you get a little bit more visibility for your business. This is who I am. As I said, I come from small business. I have earned the Excellence in Small Business Award from the Texas governor. I have worn a U.S. Air Force Service Award because of what I do do with the Air Force and making sure that their recruiting stations are online and visible but I'm here for you today and because of that I want you to know that I do have a background that is more than the slides at least 12 plus years to be a Google trainer and as I said 20 plus years so I know what it's like to be butcher baker candlestick maker as well as now chief web designer chief analyst chief marketer the janitor and everything else to serve your customer and move your business along 
So we know then we people are looking, they go online when they want to know, go, do, or buy. Now let me preface that also so you know that we go on a mobile first. 84% go on mobile first. I was working with a team yesterday and I explained to them that, you know what, you have limited resources, build for mobile first, leave desktop alone because not many people will go to desktop, but they will go to mobile and that is just increasing. So you do want to have a good mobile experience. In fact, if you go to some sites now, it will even say that it's only available on mobile no longer on desktop working with the Amazon team that's what they built for first with extra money and extra time meaning resources and labor they will build for desktop but mobile comes first so when you look at web design a lot of times people think it's just the graphics and the colors and the fonts and they really corral it to just that and it's more than just that it's the functionality do you make it easy for people to buy from you do you make it really simple for them to get get along, to get information, to buy more, to increase what's known as the AOV, that average order value, which if you're in e-commerce, that is where you like to stay and increasing that AOV and the LTV, the lifetime value of your customer. So it has everything to do with layout and content. Is it helpful to them? That's why it's so important and it's on us to be experts in our customer because it can't be great content if it's just in our head. We're not our best customer. It is for them and what they need on their customer journey to make those good decisions on whether or not they want to do business with you to help avoid those pitfalls to be able to move along and get to the goal that they're looking for hello hello I see a financial <laughs> Cheryl you got a lot going on here <laughs> We got a lot going on. Hello, Xavier. Welcome. I'm grateful everybody that's come in. Find that chat box, okay? So a great website, today's agenda, we'll be talking about how it needs to be goal-oriented. What does success look like, sound like, and feel like? You've thrown a website up there, and if you're just hoping to get more business, hope is wonderful to have, but it's a poor strategy. So what is the purpose of your website? What does success looks like, look like when your website performs and does the heavy lifting for you? Let, that's what you need to answer. <clears throat> you can feel free to let me know in the, in the chat box. And also, if you're new here, if this is your first time here, I'd love to know that too, because some people know me, and they know very well that I keep this so interactive. But if you're new, I just would love to know and give you a shout out. So let us know in the chat box. Is your site search friendly? Because if people can't find you, they can't do business with you. If you're not visible, how do they know that you exist? In fact, if you don't have an online presence and you're in business and people can't find you, they consider you went out of business. More than likely in 2020, but they do consider you're not in business or you're not a real business, you're a hobby. Is it convenient? Can they get to it on their mobile? Remember what I said about 84%. Hello, I do see you, Preston, Dan, Anthony. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Perfect, Travis. Thank you so much, Travis. Thank you. Hello, Cheryl. Hello, Chris. Oh, wonderful. I'm thankful for you being here and finding us. I'm so grateful to the Google Partners for introducing us. Is it organized? Does it make sense to people? Can they find what they're looking for? Is, is it a hot mess that they're running into? And is it trustworthy? Because who's going to leave any information, even their email address, which people guard because our inboxes are way overstressed, are they going to leave that information if they can't trust your site, right? So a great website needs to be goal and here at goal oriented for us. Hello, Cheryl. You, you see, I, I stumbled in my words because I saw your wonderful comment. Thank you, Cheryl. You're making my day, Cheryl. Thank you. So what do you want your website to do? Now it's time to focus on your business. What is it that you want your website to do? Let me know in the chat box. Is it to build a brand, to really just get back with customers that you've connected with either online or offline? Is it to create more leads so we need that fill that pipeline? Is it to attract employees so maybe you really want to bring in new team members? Make sales? Or is it there for support to help people who have done business with you or to help them in growing what the, is a skill set or a mindset? So I see create leads and make sales, build brand, provide support, attract employees. All right. And a lot of times, many of our websites have multiple goals. I'm not saying not to do that, but really focus in on what is that shining message that if I stumble on your website, it just reeks of it. 
I know that's exactly what you're doing. And the reason I say that is you may have pages of your website that focus on building your employer brand or looking for team members or there for support for your customers. But overall, you are to be the champion of, you know, of being the champion of making sure they stay cool. You know, you're an HVAC, a heating and air conditioning company. You're a champion that they are comfortable. However that looks like, it could look like plumbing, it could like look like they update uh, or have a maintenance plan with refrigeration or heat and, heating and air conditioning. What is it for you? Okay. What is it that you want your website to do? This is so important because I see so many waste tremendous amounts of time, energy, and money because they are trying to go after all six of these goals. And you know what they say, when you're chasing rabbits, if you start going after every rabbit, you'll catch none of them. So you do want to have that focus. Focus stands for follow one course until successful. What's that one shining brand focus of your goal? The rest is it would be great to have, but it would be terrible to miss the main goal. So you do want everything to speak to that main goal. So you need to understand your customers, how they act, think, what do they do? Now, this is important. I sit across from a lot of small businesses who tell me that they do business with anybody, everybody, and somebody. And that means they get their second cousin, nobody, because it's too big. And we as small businesses do not have time, even the large businesses, to try to reach out and touch everybody. We would need Coca-Cola type money to be able to do that. And we don't. We cannot be confusing because nowadays everybody gets 12,400 seconds in any given day, no more more than no, or sorry, 86,400 seconds in any given day, no more, no less. And because of that, once their attention is somewhere else and we've lost it, then they go on down the road. In fact, if you have a website, let me give you some quick factoids to help put that into perspective. If you have a website that's building a brand, employer, maybe based, Maybe even it's some sales, not e-commerce, but some sales. Maybe you want them to watch a video, download a PDF. Then your website needs to load on a mobile. Remember what I said, mobile comes first on a mobile in 1.2 seconds on a mobile device. It needs to fully load by that time. If you have an e-commerce site, so that means you have photos of pictures of, co of products, you have maybe hundreds, thousands of SKUs or products there, it needs to load in 1.8 seconds. So you can see, we don't give sites a lot of time, which means we need to be really good at making that website easy to work with and buy from. And that starts with the goals of our site so that our content is that laser focused that when they see it, they think, oh my gosh, they get me. Okay, so let's look at that. Are your goals smart tested? Every goal needs to be smart tested. That stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. Okay, that's really important. Miss one of those and you miss a trajectory and you totally miss your target. So it has to pass the test of five specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. So as we do that, look at those goals underneath. Do you want to increase your website visits by 20% over the next two months? Is that specific? Yes. You want to increase website visits, not just by, you know, hey, it was 100 website visits this week. It's going to be 101. It's not just, okay, we want more is one. All right, we do see that it is measurable because we can look and see how many people visit our sites and we can see that we have 20% over. Is it attainable? That really depends on your business because I don't know your business, but look at the history. You know, it's one thing when people tell me, okay, they made $100 last month and they want to make a million dollars next month. And I think, wow, that's great to have great goals, but let's look realistically at the history and set some goals and milestones that will get you there, okay? Is it relevant? Well, yes, if you get more website visitors and if you're doing business on your website or it helps elevate and build your brand, then yes. Is it time bound? Absolutely, the next two months. All right, I took you slowly through that because I just know, I really know how very much that can affect whether you win or lose in capturing people's attention online. You have that much short period of time to really capture and interest them. And that means you have to smart test all of your goals. Okay. So make sure when you get a copy of today's slides that you hang on to this, hang on to this, try to say that too quickly. You hang on to this because that will be a checklist that you can use to make sure every goal is smart tested. All right, so how will you measure that success? Is it going to be tracking your online sales? Maybe they're submitting their information for more additional information to get a report, to download a PDF. Could be that they call 
or you see them traveling through your site. They're looking at page one and page three, page four, so there's real interest. They're reading your blog post. They're watching your videos. So you do need to make sure that you are very specific about this. Remember what we said about smart testing your goals. Now Google Analytics is one way to do that. Let me know in the chat box if you use Google Analytics. This is 100% free, by the way. And what Google Analytics does is Google Analytics measures what people do on your site, how they behave, what they like, and what they don't pay any attention to. And this is important for us because imagine if I had a physical store. Let's say I had a brick and mortar store and all morning long people came in and they went from aisle one to aisle three and they left. One, three, left. One, three, left. And then afternoon they go to aisle one, aisle four, aisle three, and then they buy. Now I've got questions. Is it the people in the afternoon? There's something different about them than the people that come in the morning. Is there something on aisle four that gets them to buy? Or is there something on aisle three that makes them wonder and question? Or on aisle one that makes them want to search out more information? Now imagine this is your website. They go from page one to page three and they leave all day long. One, three, leave. One, three, leave. In the afternoon they go from page one home page to page four, page three, now you have questions. This is where Google Analytics does assess that for you and it gives you that information of where they looked and what they needed or what they didn't find. It helps you know how they found you. What did they put in and say, hey Google, hey Alexa, because a lot of times we're all taught, caught in our industry speak. So we think they're using our words when they're not. When I'm working with dentists and people are looking for pediatric dentists or so they think because all of their websites site says we're pediatric dentist, we're orthodontist, but that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for and the words they use are, hey Google, who can help straighten out my 13 year old's teeth? If they don't have that anywhere on their website, then they don't match up to what people are searching for. Google search works on three pillars, relevance, distance, and prominence. Relevance means how well do you match what words people are using to find you. You're using pediatric dentist and orthodontist and they're using how can you straighten my 13 year old's teeth. There's a big difference. Google's not going to show you because you're not using their words, which is what matters most. So it's important to know that first item, which is what are the search terms? What words do they use to find you or to look? Understand what your vis website visitors like. Do they like video? Man, do they like TikTok and they just like that short form video or those short YouTube shorts? Or do they like longer, more involved, more complete information in a video? So the long form video or maybe even a medical report or a full report. Discover what they want and what channels work best. That's what I love about Google Analytics too, because Google Analytics, just so that you know, will let you know what pages they go to, what information they like. Did they like this above the scroll? So above the scroll is when we have to scroll up, four and a half inch screen, scroll up, everything important. Remember in the days of newspaper when we'd say above the fold? Above the scroll is where you put everything important. So as they scroll up, are they finding you? That's really important. Are they using, really using meta? Are they on TikTok? Or maybe they just go there and it feels good, but they don't. Do they leave your site to go to socials to get your social credit? or do they go to your competitor sites? Which do they go to? Because now you'll know as you look in Google Analytics and watch your customer's journey. What were those three words? Absolutely, Dan, no worries. And also I'm recording too, just so you know, Dan, but it just won't be available till later because of course it's live right now. So it'll be this afternoon. It takes a little bit to just upload it and render it, but it's relevance, distance, and prominence. So what is relevance? How well do you match? To what people are searching for using their words. Distance is, of course is how far are you from the person who's searching. And then prominence, now understand that each of these pillars has about a thousand pieces to it, but prominence means your quality score. When was the last time you updated your website? Do you have schema? Is it easy to be able to navigate and see your site? So do you have a schema set to your site? We'll talk about that in a moment. Do you have um, when was the last time you uploaded video? Do you have video on your site? Those all lend to your quality score. Is your content helpful or is it just repetitive over and over again? Or do people seem to want to read it and consume and look at more information? Okay? So Google Analytics, to set that up, you just go to g.co slash analytics. And all you need to do is click that sign into analytics. You're welcome, Dan. Just refresh. 
<laughs> Cheryl, that's perfect. Just all you need to do is be logged into your free Google account. So a free personal Gmail account or free Google account is a free account. You don't need a paid account for any of this. You're going to sign into analytics. It will read your credentials because you're already signed into your free Google account. And then you can get it started. And a property is your website. So your URL, your website address, that's your property. You're going to go ahead and set that up and attach it to your website so it can start reading it and let you know exactly what people are doing. Now, if you do not know, for those of you who are on analytics, who already have it connected to your website and you have not upgraded to GA4, Google Analytics 4, that launched a couple of years ago, but it became the only Google Analytics version available on July 1st. So if you're wondering why your numbers aren't changing, they won't if you are with old classic or universal analytics. You need to be on the new analytics to be able to get the new and accurate numbers, okay? So that's how to do that. If you want to screenshot that, or as I said, you can get a copy of today's slides in the handout I'm using just right now. You can download that right here. I'll drop that URL again in the chat box, okay? All right. <clears throat> what reports you can see in Google Analytics 4 to help you understand? Remember what I said about we it's important for us to be experts in our business. It's our heavy lifting. We need to be the expert on our customers. So we need to know real time what's happening. Why would I want to use this report? Let's say I just put a post out on and on uh, Instagram and I changed my profile link. So there are four profile links in Instagram I can use and I changed one of them to come to this particular page of the site. So in real time, if I just posted it, I can see if somebody within the last five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 hour, I can see all of that happening. I can also see where people come from, what channels do they come from? Is it really Pinterest? Is it TikTok? Is it more of my blog engagement? What amount of time they're spending on the site? Monetization, whether or not they're buying anything in the site and what they like and what they dislike. Retention, how many are coming back, their return customers. And I can look at their demographics, psychographics, get a little bit about their behavior and what tech they're using because sometimes I need to know whether or not they're coming in on a smart TV or laptop just depending on what I'm designing and presenting for them to see on the site, okay? So a great website has to be search friendly. Remember what I said about relevance distance and prominence. So when you're searching, this is what it looks like on a laptop or desktop. You'll usually see above where that text ad is. We see that at the very top. Um, you'll see even photos and that's what's known as shopping ads. So those are paid positions. You have to pay for those ads to show up. The rest though, organic results, you have to earn that by being able to focus and master relevance, distance and prominence and really understanding who that best customer is. Remember, I said it doesn't matter that we can serve anybody, everybody, and somebody, but we want to focus on that best customer. And once we have them and have them in by the hundreds, then the rest, everybody else is gravy. We can still help them, but we want to make sure that we don't miss that best customer who gives us the most pleasure and profit. Okay. Look at that right hand side. You'll see the Google business profile. How many of you have one of these? Let me know because this is how for free that you can control your information on Google search and maps by using that Google business profile. It used to be known as Google My Business, GMB, some people call it a Google listing, but its actual name is a business profile, Google business profile, perfect. That is how you can control that. And it's really important for you to remember this because this gets a lot of favor in Google's algorithm, which means that it shows up higher than anything else. In fact, if you look at generative search, so generative search is leaning now into AI, which is the way Google search is evolving. It pulls up photos and videos from the Google business profile first when it's searching, as well as questions and answers. So if you don't have one of these, then your competitor does, then they win in search. Remember what I said, people don't like to scroll. They like to look at what's above the scroll. They only scroll when they're really, really interested. Hello, hello, Vikram. Welcome, Travis. I'm so glad you have one. That's, are you posting to it now? When was the last time you posted? Because we want to show that we're an active business. We all know this from social media but also it applies to your Google business profile. The last time you posted is the last time you were in business. So it's important to post regularly. In fact, anything that you're posting on socials, post it on Google. Remember now it's information based. So you don't want to post like, do you like this or that? You may want to say in Albuquerque, 
you maybe you're a realtor in Albuquerque and you say, do you like this style or that style? And you can say, well, in Albuquerque, 75% of people like, or 75% of the people that follow me like two-story homes or like homes with tile better than they like homes with carpets, okay? So you can put that as opposed to what you're doing in socials where you're actually getting that feedback. Google's more information-based, so you want to give them the results of that, but you see how you can use that content and repurpose it there on your Google business profile and be found in Google search, right? All right, um, there is, oh, perfect. Okay, I see, I see there's customers posting. We respond as needed, not very active though. Yes, sometimes it's not really meant, Vikram, the Google business profile is not meant to be active. This is for me at 2.20 in the morning because that's when most women between the ages of 35 and 45 shop is at 2.20 in the morning when I'm looking to find out whether this is a credible business. Do they have that local are they local? Do they have it in stock? Or do I even care if they're local? And I just want to order it and see if they have this size, this many, uh, or this version. Okay? So it is for that confirmation. It's for information. So for your site, it has to be fast. Remember what I said, 1.2 seconds for a regular website, 1.8 seconds for an e-commerce website. This is very important because I know there are a lot of Shopify themes and I've worked with several, several, well, dozens, several dozens, four dozen um, different Shopify stores. And I know some of the Shopify themes, just the themes, that's the color, the photos, the layout, take 3.8 seconds to load. So you will be way over time and nobody will look at your site if it takes that long to load just the theme, let alone anything else. Is it useful then to them? Can it help them avoid pitfalls, make decisions, get them to where they want to go when they come to see you? What is it that they want when they find you? What is it that they want to know, go do, or buy? And text links. Do you have text, link, text links that are letting you know what people are most interested in? So do you have links that they can click on? But are you making sure that there's good space between them? Because remember, we got big old fat fingers and a small screen. And we get mad at you, the business, and the designer when we can't tap on something, not our big old finger, okay? So that's important because that's all a part of our first impression. We also want to have good page titles. This is good search engine optimization. Remember what I said about SEO being search engine optimization and that is really building confidence in the search engine in you. The search engine will deliver you high in search results when it feels confident in your information. This is why one of the unknown or least known SEO tools or practices is to connect all your Google tools. <clears throat> For example, if I have a Google business profile and I connect that to my website and I have Google Search Console, which lets me know how the, the, the search engine sees my site and how healthy my site is to the search engine, then when I connect that, when I connect Google Analytics to it, each of those are YouTube because YouTube is actually Google. It's a Google product. It's the number two search engine in the world and the number two um, social network. So as we connect all those things, all of those are pings to let Google know, you know what? This is a real business. This information here from Google Business Profile jives with Google Analytics. It's aligned nicely with what's in Google Merchant Center and Google Search Console. This is a real business and it gives you more favor in the algorithm and shows you higher because of course Google favors and trusts Google's tools, their own tools, right? So you want to make sure your information architecture, your IA also is important. IA is extremely important here too, okay? So that is the organization where you're going to hear me talk about that, your information architecture in just a moment. And it needs to look good on all browsers and devices because we don't know. Like for me, I might start in the line at school where I'm on my mobile, but then I get to my office and I throw it over to my desktop and laptop. Then I go back to mobile when I start moving around and meeting with clients. And then at night, I throw it back to my smart TV. So it needs to be able to adjust, especially if I want to research and find out more about you you and do more business with you. So you heard me talk about Google Search Console. I mentioned that just in the last slide. That is how the search engine sees your site and where it might see problems, maybe in its mobile load time, or maybe that content looks like it's the same content on a couple of other sites. So is this a copycat site? It will ask you all those questions within Google Search Console. Now, a lot of people think that Google is the World Wide Web. It is not. It is the biggest library of the World Wide Web. 
And what I'm showing you front and center here is the door to the library. Now, a lot of people just throw things on. <clears throat> they'll put a blog post on and they'll publish it. They'll load a new product or service and they'll publish it and they'll think that Google will find you. And while Google Bot is amazing, it can take up to 90 days, three months to find you. So knowing this and knowing how important cash flow is to small business, do you really want to wait for the search engine to find you in 90 days, potentially 90 days before you can start getting in front of customers? No. The minute I publish it, I'm over there going, okay, now I want to see some eyeballs and people looking at this. Eyeballs and people looking and coming to your site is called traffic. I want to see traffic from it. I don't want it to be silent for 90 days. So then now it's on me to make sure that my website is entered into the library. And you do that here, making sure that Google can see the pages you want it to see or not look at the pages you don't want it to see. So this is really important. So Google Search Console actually lets you know if Google can even see your site or found your site. It also will alert Google if you let an index let Google know by indexing saying, look, my pages have changed. I added new pages. I added new product. It'll also let you know where the traffic's coming from and if there are any issues with your site, like, oh my gosh, it's not loading on mobile. You loaded a pop-up there and you thought it was the most amazing thing, but it's slowing everything down or it covers everything and people can't X out of it so they can't buy, they can't do anything. It will let you know all of that for free. So Google Search Console, when you're logged into your Google account, just go to g.co slash search console. You're going to add that website property. Remember, that's your domain, your website address. And now you'll start updating that to let Google know your site. What are the pages? Your site map or what are the pages of your site? Okay. Any questions? Use that chat box. All right. So we know it has to be convenient, everybody. We are all about small effort. We are about instant gratification, aren't we, and small effort. So if your website makes it easier by being responsive, that means it switches from a laptop to a mobile quickly. It is mobile responsive, so it adjusts to whatever the dimensions are of the screen it's being presented on. If we can make payment process simple, oh, this is key. I can't tell you how many millennials and Gen Zs I talk to that tell me it'll be a cold day it, it, before they ever get up out of the couch or their bed to buy anything. So if it doesn't have Shop Pay, Amazon Pay, Apple Pay, or Google Pay, they're not going to buy using it because it's too much for them to have to get up and go get their wallet and look at their credit card number. So it also has to have personalized recommendations, okay? So understand that I might have bought this surfboard or I might have looked at this additional information about a pediatric orthodontist, but now it's giving me recommendations about, oh, you know, if I have a, a child who's 13 compared to a child who's 14, or why it's better and what are some of the differences in the products that are needed in services if they're 10 and they're still growing and bringing in their teeth. So I could have all of that on a website. You can also put the convenience of your site out. What do you provide? Do you do delivery? Do you shipping? Do you do shipping? Do you do virtual consultations so they don't have to get out of their home at all? They can just bring you up because we all know we've been way zoomed out, way too many Zoom meetings. Everybody knows how to do it now. Just think about that. In 2020, I was doing these web meetings and barely anybody was here because they would much rather pick up a phone or meet and have coffee. That's the way we did business before while now everybody is talking about jumping on a video meeting, right? We all do FaceTime or vid meetings or Zoom. So when you look at your responsive design, Really think of mobile first. I can't say that enough. You are going to be so left behind in the 2020s if all you're doing is designing for desktop. Make sure that you are using fluid grids and vector graphics. The reason it says that is because they are smaller in size. For print, for print advertising, so if you're doing any print, billboard, direct mail, publications, you will need 600 DPI, dots per inch. That's the minimum resolution you'll need for a nice crisp print. But on a website, you just need 97. 600 would be way too big. Remember what I said about 1.2 seconds to 1.8 seconds. If you have that big an actual photo, it'll slow down your site and people will just leave. It'll load as an X and they'll go someplace else, okay? Also, aim for minimalism. This is important. We as businesses know all about our business, so we get super excited when we have a new product or service and we just throw it on the site. We really don't think about our strategy or the architecture to our site, so we just put it there and it becomes a disorganized mess, which is the number one reason people will leave a website in less than a minute. They go there and either they don't find their information because it's too hard, it's not there, or it's just a hot mess. 
All right. So we want to make sure that we are also consistent in our branding. Yes, you'll get a video recording, Kenya, as well as you'll get a copy of the slides and everything. Let me drop that one more time in the chat box. If you missed it, that's where you can get a copy of the slides. You'll get the recording later today. You will not get a recording of the Q and A at the at the end, just because I want to preserve your privacy and confidentiality, and it is for the benefit of people here. Okay. Now understand that I do see um, longer questions in there. I will save those. Actually, if you'll copy and paste and save those to the end, because if it's more than if it's a sentence long, it takes a minute to read and all you guys see is the top of my head. It's not a good experience for everybody in the room, okay? So we do want to reduce those checkout steps. We want to show them how they're doing and give them the ability to go back and buy more. Don't make them have to come all the way out just to shop and add more to their shopping cart if you are having them purchase things. Let's see. Um, our question, are rotating images on a homepage a good format? I like that they were a while ago. Um, Automatic rotating, just be careful because automatic rotating, Adriana, usually takes up space. It means it takes time to load. And remember what I said, there's, it's, they're not forgiving on the 1.2 seconds. You've got to be that quick, okay? So that's what's very important. That's the only, that's why sometimes now you'll see on websites where people can just drag and scroll, right? So they just tap it, they tap, and they scroll like that because you can still have all those photos in there, a really nice carousel, but you don't have the video automation that really weighs down and can bog down a site. So keep that in mind, okay? So now you can reduce the checkout steps, make sure that they can see all the different ways that they can pay. Don't hide it, don't make them work for it. The more they click, the more they have to work for it, show it to them. You can also start recommending different products based on their search history. I love that Shopify does this. If you've not tried Shopify's new AI sidekick, you've got to try it because now you can start putting those recommended products in when somebody's looking It adjusts things on your site to showcase what are the most popular products first, which is really cool. It has some of that functionality already. The rest of it will be coming in 2024 but you can start putting things in there. Therefore, you're increasing not just the average order value, but the lifetime value because now they're falling in love with more things that they can actually have to consume and go back and buy. Do you like affiliate programs connected to your website? Yes, I do if they bring money. That's the big thing. Affiliate programs are great if they bring money. That's the big, we always need to measure our marketing. If we're not measuring, we're not marketing. One dollar or one minute spent, that's not lifting the bottom line or getting us closer to the goal. Is one dollar or one minute spent too much? I'm a huge fan of socials, but if you can't quantify how socials brings you money, then you've got a problem. You've got to sit down and figure out how come you're spending this time here and what does that mean to lifting that bottom line or getting you closer to your goal. So you could put into your website the ability for them to just say that they want it curbside, that they want fast delivery, virtual consultations. We really went over that. But the most important thing is to know how convenient our website is on a mobile device. So if you see right there, there's a URL that is 100% free to visit. Go to g.co slash mobile friendly, put in your website and find out exactly how fast or how slow your site loads and find out what is slowing it down. Is it that big picture? Is it that big rotating image? Is it the GIF that you loved and thought was so funny, but it's way too big to have actually on a website loading on a mobile device? You need to know. So take a look at that and go test it yourself, all right? So should we stick with Wix or Shopify? I like both. I like both. So you're asking, Cheryl, those are content management systems. So Shopify, WordPress, Wix, Squarespace, all of those are what's known as content management systems. And I like them all. But it, remember what I said about going back to your goals. What's your goals? If you're an e-commerce site, then um, WooCommerce, which is the e-commerce site of WordPress, would be better than a WordPress site. If I was an employer brand or building myself as an expert authority or you know, if I'm a realtor and I want them to know that they want to come to me, then I might use a WordPress site because I don't need all the e-commerce functionality that Big Commerce or that Shopify can provide me. Okay. What the test will tell you if you go to this test, remember this test, this g.co slash mobile friendly is if it's usable on mobile, is it responsive, how it appears, and also how to fix it. That's what I love. It'll tell you exactly how to fix it. So you can do that yourself and just follow along, or you can ask whoever's your web designer. In my case, it's my son, and I can just forward to him and say, fix this, right? That's as techy as I get. <laughs> 
Now, is your website design responsive? This is really important. So I'm going to ask everybody, I'm just going to ask actually, let me go up here to the chat box. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and um, somebody drop your website address in there. Let's see how responsive you are on mobile, okay? Okay, Triumph, sorry, Ooh, triumphnd.com. All right, I'm going to go here to, I'm going to do a dangerous screen switch. There we go. I'm in Google search. This is a live demo, Triumph, oh, triumphnd.com, okay? Make sure I got that right. The biggest part of that is me spelling it wrong. All right, if you are in a Google Chrome browser, you must be in a Google Chrome browser. I'm in a Chrome browser. So once I right click, right, on a Chrome browser, oop. Oh, I can't right click anywhere here. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, this must be, is this a big picture or, let me see. Yeah, I can't right click on this one. This is interesting. Okay, you may not be able to use this with what what um triumph nd what um what's your content management system here what are you using this is interesting okay while you let me know that i'm going to go to marta guzman dot com all right okay this is what I'm looking for when I right click. Okay, so this can only remember happen on a Chrome browser. When I click inspect, see how now inspect will make it look like a mobile and you can say it's on an iPhone or maybe I wanna see what it looks like on a Samsung 8. Now I can see if my website is mobile friendly, any photos or text, video hanging off. Really nice, Marta, it looks well on a Samsung. Let's take it again to an iPhone 12. Nice. Let's look at it on, uh, let's see. I'm going to look at an iPad mini real quick. Nice. It doesn't look too awkward. Got a little space here, but not bad at all. So nice, nice, nice. All right. Let me know. Let, let me do this for you, Martha, too. You want to be in a Chrome browser. Remember Chrome. You're going to put in the word site, S-I-T-E, and I'm going to put Marta. So no www or HTTPS, martaguzman.com. Okay, well, I'm still in inspect. Let me take that out of inspect and refresh it. No, I don't want you to know my location right now. Let me make this bigger because I'm broadcasting. All right, Marta, what this is telling you is that Google sees 20 of your search results, 20 pages is what Google sees. If these are all your pages, then you're golden. But look at your website. How many pages does your website have? So you guys can do this too. You do need to be in a Google Chrome. You're going to use the word S-I-T-E colon, not semicolon, so it's the two dots, Marta Guzman. So no HTTPS, no www at all, just the domain, martaguzman.com.net.biz, whatever that is, .org. And then it'll let you know what Google can actually see of your site. And if there's something missing, then you need to let it know in Google Search Console. Okay? All right. Let's go back to the presentation. There we go. And let me get this out of the way. All right. So it's not blocking my way. So you can do this. That's how you can toggle over to see and inspect it, see if it's mobile friendly, mobile responsive, as well as you can see how much Google actually sees of your site. The next part is this, it does need to be organized. Remember what I said about information architecture? When you right click and click inspect, how do you get to the mobile view? Oh, let me show you that again. All right. Um, Wix. Okay, I'm wondering what's covering it there because it can't see it, but that's that's also, let me do something really quickly. I'm going to do a quick, uh, let me go to a live demo again, and I'm going to go to site triumphnd.com. It does see 20 of your search results, so just have to see if you have 20 pages, okay? 
So take a look at that. If you have 20 pages and that's what Google sees and you want it to see that, then you're golden. All right, how can you right click? Uh, let me see, let me go to uh, Omni, I'm gonna use somebody's here. Omni, Omnil, pn.com okay Don so how you do that is you're in Google Chrome remember what I said it has to be Google Chrome you're gonna right click you're gonna click inspect once you click inspect if you're not taken here like let's say you're taken to this gibberish what you're looking for I know this is super tiny too let me make this bigger oh it's not even gonna make that bigger up here but you see that looks like a little desktop and a little mobile phone you're gonna click on that and that's how you, you can now look at it by device, okay? So now you can click and say an iPad mini to a Samsung 8 Plus, right? To see what it looks like. All of that here. Okay? All right. Let's go back. Perfect. You're welcome, Brandy. I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you like it, Dan. All right. This is what information architecture is. Okay. This is the structure. So basically, websites have their homepage, usually a t our team, about us, shop, and contact. <clears throat> but information architecture makes your site so organized so people, people can find their way. So you see here, in this instance, for Trade Street Jam, when they shop, it's more than just products. Maybe you don't want to look at all the jam and hot sauce because you're just in there to buy a gift card for your friend who's a foodie, and you don't need to go looking through all this and get tempted because you're on a diet. So you want to get just gift cards, right? So again, make it easy for people to find what they're looking for and make sure your structure, your information architecture structure follows the way that they shop and the information that they need. When you're organizing your website, remember what I said above the scroll, that's like above the fold, the most important information. So you want to have a list of the pages of your website. Do not pay, make people guess that. Have a way that they can see it. You want to assign each page a clear call to action. What is it that you want them to do? Remember, they are inundated with messages all day long. It's very confusing that as they're looking at a site and they're distracted by a text or a phone call when they come back and they don't know what you want them to do. So you need to clear Clearly lay out what is that call to action what's the next step to make it successful for you use visual elements to highlight that and really make sure it's easy for people to navigate so as you see here with trade street jam you can see that they actually put some good information architecture there and they may even want to look at okay what kind of jams maybe some are fruit maybe some are vegan maybe some are local farm sourced maybe some are USA source made in the USA so they might want to break down their information architecture that way. Now to find out exactly what it is people search for when they're looking for your product service or solution, you can find that easily in Google Trends. If you go to g.co slash trends, again 100% free, you can go to Google Trends and you can go here and find out what people are searching for right now, what's most popular in the United States around your industry, around your brand, around your competitor's brand. But not just what's right now in the United States, it could be in the last 30 days or a quarter because I want to see the hills and valleys and really get an understanding of seasonal trends. It could be over years. It could be just on YouTube what they're searching. It could be within the last hour what they're searching. If I'm struggling with what to post, I might want to know as I look at my community. So I live in rural Midland, Texas, and I might want to look in Midland, Texas, exactly what people are searching for within the last hour because I'm about to do a post for a realtor and I want to know exactly what it is people are looking for because I believe in the philosophy of fish where the fish are. It takes a tremendous amount of time, energy, and money to get people to look over here when they're looking over here. I would much rather meet them here. When I was working with a veterinarian, actually we were working with a veterinarian in Corpus Christi, the highest search item in the last hour in Corpus Christi was cheapest veterinarian in Corpus Christi. While he wasn't the cheapest, he did a blog post, several Instagram reels, and a TikTok saying, I'm not the cheapest, but I'm the best because your four-legged family member is a family member to me. So he met them where the eyeballs are already, okay? So you can go to Google Trends to take a look. Let me leave that up there again. Uh, I see a question here. Should call to action be on informational pages? Yes, 
Exactly, Adriana. Do you want them to leave their email address? Do you want them to read more, learn more? Do you want them to look at this next page to continue down to the second half of the story or the second half of the learning or look at this report or look at the survey that confirms this or leave your information to get sent more information or would you like to learn more? We'll send you a whole video on this. So that could be your call to action there, Adriana. So yes, it works for any website to be able to do that. So in Google Trends, you can see, for example, here, she's looking at uh, June, I think it's Jam and then July, really there. I don't know why she's looking at Jam in July, but it could be that I'm looking at Trade Street Jam and I'm looking at Smuckers. So I want to see what people are looking for when they find Smuckers because maybe they're using words that I'm not using at Trade Street Jam and I can use some of their words to get them looking at my way. Remember what I said about relevance and how important that is in search. There are going to be times when people come across your site and they're looking for a page that doesn't exist. So make sure your 404 pages are working for you. Make it fun for them. Make it easy to find information. Redirect them to where they can find information. Now I'll tell you a little expert tip. I won't be able to teach you that here today because that's all in our Google Analytics um, web shop or workshop uh, that I do, the webinar that I do. But you can actually find out what people are searching for, terms where they can't find anything. That really helps you because when I I go to a site and I can see, oh my gosh, you know, you've got a hundred people searching for this forklift and it's too hard to find on your site. Let's put it at the front of the page and let's make sure that Google and these people can find this forklift more easily. So it's good to know what they search for. All right. As we wind on down, your website does need to be secure. So it has to have SSL, right? Remember what I said about secure being SSL, which means you have HTTPS. And the reason this is important is because Google actually penalizes you if your site is not secure and it's not mobile responsive. Those two things, doesn't matter what you do in SEO, it will not get you to the top no matter what you pay to have somebody expertly do SEO for you. It won't because those two things are very grave on the impact that they have in search. You also have to have secure payments as well, okay? And you want to include business reviews because we love that third party validation. We love to see ratings and you need contact information. In fact, a lot of the search engines, even TikTok shop and Instagram shop require that you have this there because it shows that you're a good viable business and not just some phishing site that's trying to get people's additional information. Okay. Deep breaths, everybody. We covered a lot, right? So for you, while well, we covered a lot, my question to you is, what are you going to apply? Because knowledge is not powerful until it's applied. So I covered these items today, these five items, making sure it's goal oriented, search friendly, convenient, organized, and trustworthy. What is gonna be your focus area? What two or three things from our time together today are you going to apply so you can make sure that today was not just time spent, but time invested in helping you grow your business? You can always go to grow, google.com slash grow to see what additional resources we have, what other trainings that I can do for you, and then go back to the Google partner who invited you and say, bring Maria back. If you liked me, I'd love to come back, okay? So let me know. These are your Google partners again, showing them up there just in case you need to get a quick snap of that to remember who to contact for resources, for help, for support, those boots on the ground there for you. When would you advise it worth paying someone to help with a website versus trying to do it oneself? It depends, Adriana. It really depends on whether or not you are ready for somebody to, uh, let's put it this way. Are you, is it, is there, are there things that only you can do that somebody else can do? Because if you are doing it and it's keeping you from doing things like sales or contacting people or building your product or service or delivering that product or service, then you might want to bring other people in to do a lot of different things, not just website, okay? If you want to ask me a question, this is office hours. This is how you can get a hold of me. It is a paid subscription. So I have a free community where I do Google updates. In fact, the Google update is dropping this morning, letting you know all the latest things on Google that apply for small businesses. And I do that every week in our free community. The office hours is a paid membership community where you can ask me questions, walkthroughs, ask me to help support you and look at things that you built on your website. And I'm happy to do that there. I do video reviews, but it is paid. If you want to ask me, know that you don't have to go to just me though. You have these wonderful Google partners who are ready to help you. Okay. 
All right, and if I've done well today, then I want to model to you the behavior that I want you to do because 97% of people don't leave a good review because people don't ask them for a review. I'm going to ask you for a review. You don't have to leave me one, but you can go to reviewmaria.com or use this QR code if I provided good information, have been helpful to you, or in a way that helps you apply what you're learning, okay? All right, we are going to go now to Q&A. This is if you need to contact me, feel free to reach out and contact me here. Remember what I said, I'm on Twitter or Instagram, and we do have a free community where I do Google updates as well. I'm going to go ahead and 